hello folks this is nitin welcoming you to the ai university channel where you can learn all your favorite digital technologies like machine learning deep learning ai big data hadoop virtual reality and cloud computing in this video we are going to create a very quick project where we are going to turn any image or a colored image or picture into a pencil sketch using computer vision techniques and python language the link of the jupyter notebook related to this video can be find at the end of the video and in the description section so stay connected till the end of this video and this series to acquire complete knowledge if you are new here then consider subscribing to this channel or if you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications about hottest technologies of 21st century So let me first tell you what exactly is computer vision. Well, computer vision is an area of study which provides help to the computers to extract the information from images in an automated fashion, uh, thereby trying to find out the content of an image or a video. The content of an image can be extracted from its pixel because you are uh, you might already know that uh, every image is uh, composed of uh, small pixels. In order to recognize the content of an image, we can develop methods which can try to reproduce the capability of human vision. Now, in today's uh, digital era, there is a growing interest in how machines uh, see so that some novel products uh, can be built. There are several applications of computer vision and uh, some of them are face recognition, uh, Google Lens, etc. Let's move on and apply some of the computer vision techniques to turn a color image or picture into a sketch like photo. I will be using Google Colab to build this project and if you don't know what a Google Colab is then uh, watch the video given in the i button above. I will be utilizing Python language to uh, develop this project. So just to tell you that Python actually refers an image as an array of numbers so we can perform various metrics manipulations to get the desired result. So let's head over to the Google Colab Jupyter Notebook real quick. So this is my uh, Google Colab Jupyter Notebook. And uh, in the first cell, what I'm doing is I'm installing the image IO package using pip install image IO. So image IO provides an API to write and read the image data for a large variety of formats. There are variety of functions associated with this particular package uh, like IM read, MIM read, uh, VOL read, IM write, etc. So that uh, we can, you know, read and write the image data using this uh, package. In the next cell, I'm using matplotlib inline, uh, uh, you know, to draw a graph or image in the Jupyter notebook. So this line should be the first line whenever uh, we want to uh, draw a graph or uh, display a image. Okay. Next, I'm importing packages like image IO, uh, requests, uh, matplotlib, ipython dot display, etc in order to uh, utilize the corresponding methods uh, in uh, the, the code later on. So I'm going to explain the related code uh, later on, okay, uh, down below the uh, Jupyter Notebook. In the next line, I'm storing the image URL in the variable called IMG, okay. So this image URL is a URL associated with this image displayed here, okay and uh, right underneath that i am actually displaying the image uh, in jupyter notebook by using a request package and uh, in fact uh, the associated method to this request package is get okay so this get method is used to access the image from url okay using https uh, http request and then getting the content of that image uh, using content method here okay and when I ran the cell you could see that uh, this uh, image got displayed in Jupyter notebook from the image URL provided here moving on in the next cell I am actually uh, utilizing the image IOs I am read function here okay uh, or method here to read the image by providing that image URL as 
parameter here. Next, I'm trying to make this image black and white by doing grayscaling here in this cell. So this particular cell, in this cell I'm doing grayscaling. Now the ultimate question is what is grayscaling and why do we need that? Well, every color image is composed of groups of three pixels, naming, uh, namely uh, red, blue and green, which are also called channels. Okay, so basically three channels, uh, every color image contains three channels. And if we remove the color information from the image, then it will become grayscale image, which is a black and white image. Now grayscale image has only one channel. Okay. In a way, we try to basically convert a 3D color image to 2D grayscale image so that it becomes very easy to work with 2D vectors because we want to represent this uh, image as a array, okay, so that we can uh, work on it uh, or apply any mathematical functions. Grayscale image contains uh, shades of gray color ranging from 0 to 255 representing the brightness of the pixel. So if the value is 0, that means uh, it is totally dark and if the value is 255, then uh, it means that it's totally white. So I'm creating a function here with the name uh, grayscale as you can see, but before that I'm just uh, importing this numpy package, okay, and then I'm defining this function grayscale img, okay, which takes image as an input argument here. And this function calculates the weighted mean of RGB values of an original image by using uh, the formula given here, as you can see, this is the formula, all right, thereby turning, uh, returning the grayscale version of any color image, okay. So as you can see, I passed my uh, source image, which I defined here, okay. So I passed it as a parameter or argument to this function and stored the grayscale version of this image in the variable called grysCL underscore img. So grysCL stands for grayscale. Okay. And I'm storing the value in this variable. In the next cell, I am uh, basically inverting. So let me scroll down a bit. So in the next cell, I'm uh, inverting the image by subtracting this image uh, from the number 255. So as we know that grayscale images are 8-bit images having a maximum tone of 256 because 0 is also included in it. So we know that it ranges from 0 to 255. Okay, so there are 255 tones and including 0 there are 256 tones. Okay, so essentially the inverse of grayscale value uh, let's say is x. Okay. So simply we will do 255 minus x in order to uh, get the inverse of uh, a grayscale image. So by inverting an image, we actually create the negative of the image. So if you have uh, seen old cameras, then you might have already seen negatives uh, having image impressions. Okay, so we used to get the positive from the negative uh, image. Okay. Uh, in the uh, older days, right, when we used to click those photos. So by inverting an image, we pr produce the image's photographic negative, that is, dark areas in the input image becomes light and light areas becomes dark. This step is required to make image clearer for the uh, machine to interpret. And I'm displaying the output of that inverted image using matplotlib and you can see that this is the image here and it pretty much looks like negative of uh, the image we have here, right? So it looks like negative of it. In the next cell, uh, I'm blurring the image by making use of Gaussian filter. Okay. And this technique is sometimes called as image smoothing. In order to do so, I'm first importing this uh, SciPy's ND, uh, ND image package. Okay. And in the next line, I'm applying this Gaussian filter uh, using filters.gaussian underscore filter method and providing in inverse uh, inverted image as a one of the parameter or argument. The second argument is a standard deviation, which is uh, sigma and uh, the value is kept as 5 here. So this standard deviation value here determines the degree of smoothing of uh, Gaussian filter. 
if we increase this sigma value then the image uh, will, would become more blur okay so keep this thing in mind now the question is why are we blurring this image well the answer is to remove any noise okay and you, uh, so photographs can have small irregularities and by doing blurring we can smoothen out the uh, high densities now i am displaying the output of the blurred image uh, using matplotlib and you can see that in that uh, the inverted image got blurred here so this is this image is some uh, somewhat blurred from the above image so moving on uh, in the next cell i am creating a function to perform image dodging well dodging is used to lighten up the prominent areas of the image since we want to make our uh, image as a pencil sketch uh, so we need to use a dodging technique to lighten up uh, prominent areas of the image here we are blending grayscale and blurred image okay uh, so the two uh, input arguments are blur image and grayscale and uh, the mathematical computations uh, are happening inside this functions and which are quite self explanatory uh, so i will move on to the next cell where i am generating a target image all right here in this cell so here i am generating the target image by providing blurred and grayscale images as input arguments to the dodging function here okay so there is this dodging function we have defined here in the next cell i am using matplotlib library to display the target image using i am show a function here as you can see so let me scroll down a bit all right so here i am using this i am show uh, method to uh, basically showcase uh, the pencil sketch kind of image okay and i provided the target image as one of the argument and the second argument is cmap which we want to keep as gray okay in the next cell uh, i am just saving this image okay and i'm using the method called i am save to save this particular uh, pencil sketch image and here i'm providing the name of this image the target image as the second parameter cmap parameter i'm keeping as gray and i'm keeping the vmin and vmax value as as 0 and 255 respectively so folks this is it for this video to conclude i explained and showed different computer vision related topics as well as steps to convert any colored image into pencil sketch image so let me ask you a question from today's video. Why did we invert the grayscale image while working on this project? Please post your comments, answers uh, in the comment section given below so that I can get a chance to incorporate your feedback. You can also post your que technical questions in the comment section and I will try to answer the same. If you are watching this video and you are not already a subscriber to our channel, consider clicking that little subscribe button. In case you have already subscribed then click on the bell icon to receive the notifications whenever I will release a new video. So thanks for hanging out with me guys. I will be covering next topic in the upcoming video. So keep on watching. Thank you.